Hey guys, Andre right here, and welcome back to another Class Rail video today. As you can see right now, I've pushed up to 6,600 trophies with the Classic 2.9 Mortar Cycle deck. Now, this deck in this meta actually does surprisingly well if you know what you're doing. The matchups can get quite difficult. As long as you have the correct game plan, you're able to overcome a lot of insanely difficult matchups. So today, I'm going to go over a couple of replays that I had on my journey to 6,600 trophies, just because I generally play a little bit better when I don't have to commentate. So these matches are going to be textbook on how I would recommend you approach these matchups. So before we get into some matches, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Also go check me out on my Instagram and Twitter, links down below. And if you'd like to support me in game, feel free to use code LEGENDARAY in the shop. And with all that out of the way, let's get right into some matches. Alrighty, so this first match here is going to be against this player. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. And uh, he's from the clan Aguilas Dordas. Um, so yeah, obviously he's using Lava Hound. And starting off, he cycles a zap. So I just go ahead and cycle my log. And here, this man just goes ahead and straight up plays Lava Hound first play. Which is something you'll experience quite often. So of course, I cycle the archers as the very first play. That way, I have the ability to cycle back to a second set of archers. Now, he's going to begin building up. Up that lava loon push of course playing that balloon behind the lava hound not too difficult i go in with a knight in case he had like a baby dragon or something and wanted to take out my archers but looks like he just had arrows and then here i'm just going to use that defensive mortar pull the balloon in towards that uh, other tower and then the tornado will finish that king tower activation and you can see the knight actually got a surprisingly large amount of damage taking his tower down to 22 21 and now this is going to be a bit of a difficult defense here I go in with a knight to take out that miner and tank for all of this stuff. Ice Spirit down to freeze those skeleton dragons as well. And as the tower takes those down, you can see that this match is actually pretty much tied up. He has about 100 damage advantage over me, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not too big of a deal. So... Yeah, I believe here the opponent just goes in with another Lava Hound in the back, and I just go ahead and go in with a Mortar at the bridge. As you can see, that caused him to play down an Inferno Dragon, and you can see now he basically has no Elixir, and those Archers are going to finish off that Inferno Dragon. He does zap those Archers, so only one does survive, but that is still one surviving Archer, and you can see it's going to get so much damage onto that Lava Hound over time. In fact, he's actually going to send in a Miner to take out that Archer just to stop that damage from coming in. However, However, look at that Lava Hound. It gets so much damage onto the tower. This is why I hate this matchup so, so much because the Lava Hound, like, you can just shove a Lava Hound at the bridge. And if I don't have a Mortar in cycle, that Lava Hound itself, like, without even popping, is going to deal so much damage. But anyways, here, as you can see, his arrow is just obliterating my archers. Luckily, I get a Mortar down to tank, and he has to use a Balloon to finish that off. I go ahead and rock it there. Unfortunately, for some reason, the Balloon connects. Uh, it sh I don't, I still don't think it should have, but here the opponent goes in, of course, with a Lava Hound in the back. And being a cycle deck, I cycle back to another Mortar, and, and here he just goes in with Barbarians. And you can see, there's, there's like no breaking through those Barbarians, because there's just so many of them, and they're so tanky. So here, Knight to tank for those Skeleton Dragons. I'll rocket out those Skeleton Dragons right there. Uh, just, just to try and get one Mortar hit onto the tower, but nothing happens there. So I have to go in with archers here. Uh, I'm trying to cycle back to a mortar. I play the mortar on offense right there. You can see uh, ice spirit and skeletons finish off the mortar. And as you can see, the mortar actually sneaks in a hit onto the tower. And that is all I need. Tornado will finish off the balloon right there. And then I can just go ahead and play down a rocket log tornado to finish that tower off. So as you can see, these matches are always really, really sketchy against Lava Hound. But if you're always careful with when and how you play your offense then you should be able to sneak in enough chip damage to eventually take down your opponent's towers Alrighty, so next up we're going to be facing a golem lightning deck from jojo from the clan after after stoof rot okay uh might be german based on the clan thing but uh whatever anyways here he starts off with a bar barrel not quite sure what the matchup is and then he goes in with a night witch and i'm just like oh my gosh it's probably it's either going to be a giant beatdown deck or a golem beatdown deck so i cycle my archers in the back of course trying to cycle back to a second pair if necessary he goes in with a lumberjack in the back and the thing uh when you're playing against golem is if your opponent plays a four elixir card in the back they won't have elixir to play their golem down in time so of course i mortar opposite lane i get 
get myself a King Tower activation as well. And then Skeletons are an Ice Spear down in the proper timing right there. will make sure that that Mega Minion gets zero hits whatsoever onto my Mortar right there. So as you can see, really good start. Mortar gets some damage onto the tower and takes it down to 2279. But the opponent does have a somewhat large push coming our way. So as you can see, again, Archers as the first play in that defense and then a defensive Mortar playing that mortar at the last second to try and conserve as much health in case he has a lightning. However, he does not have elixir for the lightning. And you can see here the knight is just going to provide enough tanking. Rocket will finish off the, you know, the, the two supporting units. And as you can see, we're able to pretty much nullify this entire push. He does go in with a Night Witch, which uh, gets a little sketchy, but I do get those archers down just in time to nullify all of that right there. Bats do get some damage, but compared to the like over a thousand, like what, a thousand four hundred damage I dealt to his tower, this is pretty insignificant. So here I go in with a Mortar here, knowing that he probably didn't have Elixir for a Golem. And as you can see here, I just go in with a, an Ice Spirit right there. And that will allow that Mortar to get another hit onto the tower. Tower now down to 1637. And the opponent goes in, I believe, with a Golem in the back. So here I go in with a Knight and some Skeletons at the bridge to help push that Knight forward. That forces out a Barbarian Barrel, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. Um, and as you can see, that's two elixir that he would not be able to support his push with. In addition, the bar barrel is really effective uh, against those archers, so I really wanted that out of cycle. And now the opponent goes in with that lightning, uh, and I go ahead, I believe, yeah, knight to begin DPSing down that golem. Skeletons as well. Most golem decks don't have like a zap or something, and here he tornadoes those skeletons out. I just tornado the, the golem back, making sure that I do not take death damage onto the tower because golem death damage is absolutely just deadly so you do not want that on your tower anyways here i do get a quick mortar lock onto the tower right there because i was able to cycle back to the mortar and then I just go in with another mortar. I believe he gets a golem down in time. However, I go ahead and NATO that golem backwards and we do get a mortar lock on the tower. And now he's actually forced to use a lightning onto all of that stuff right there, onto like a half health mortar, which is the last thing he wants to happen. Now his lightning's out of cycle. I can just focus on playing this defense uh, and he doesn't have a big spell to finish off that mortar. So I spear down right there. Skeletons to help me cycle back to a knight. He does tornado everything together, I believe. Uh, but it's a little bit too late right there. I just go ahead and I believe tornado this entire push backwards and then play down uh, some archers to finish that off. So now his tower is down to 820, which I believe is going to be just enough to spell cycle. So I cycle the log first so I can cycle back to the log as quickly as I can. I go in with the rocket, I go in with the NATO, making sure to clip onto that tower right there. And then I go in with another log, but it's actually not enough to finish off the tower. So it gets a little bit sketchy here because I'm trying to cycle back to the tornado as fast as I can. But I do manage to get it down just in time right there with 1809 on my tower to spare. So Golem, as you can see, if, as long as you're able to just force your opponents to spend elixir that they don't want to, you're usually going to be able to stop their pushes because they simply won't have adequate elixir to support them. Alrighty, so this next match is a good one because the opponent here looks like he's from a Japanese clan He's running a Mega Knight Royal Giant deck combined with base now This deck is insanely difficult because he can just build up those massive pushes and he has the arrows just to finish off my archers So uh, yeah starting off here he goes in with a hunter I'm just gonna go ahead and rocket that out most decks with the hunter. I generally will uh, just rocket that out because it's just a two elixir trade. It's just like logging onto the opponent's tower And here the opponent just goes ahead and begins building that royal giant So I go ahead and play the uh, mortar in the anti-fireball position. I believe yep uh, because at this point, I still think he was running that Royal Giant cycle, but he places that Mega Knight down, and here I quickly cycle back to the log. As you can see, I just barely get back to the log right there, and as you can see, I go in with some Skeletons, and I believe... Okay, an Ice Spirit, and the Royal Giant gets one hit onto the tower. So, first defense... I can't really complain about it because after all, I did rock it onto the tower and here he goes in with a skeleton barrel I just go ahead and pull that to the king tower for no damage taken on my towers so This is a very useful uh, interaction to know with that skeleton barrel king activation 
So now the opponent uh, is going to try and reload and build up another push, but I'm going to go ahead and reach 10 elixir first, so I go in with a mortar on offense. The opponent has Royal Giant back in cycle, so he plays that down, and that's pretty much the end of the mortar. I mean, not much I can do about it. Royal Giant does so much damage. I actually have to log onto that Dark Goblin, which uh, in hindsight, probably not the best move. But we do manage to stop that Royal Giant without taking any hits at all. So perfectly fine right there. Here the Hunter is actually going to take quite significant damage uh, from the Archer as well as that Knight. I believe he goes in with a Goblin Barrel here. Not quite sure. Yep, looks like he does. And I just go ahead and go in with a Tornado like so. I go in with, uh, I believe, a Mortar. Yep, Mortar will tank for everything. Unfortunately, it does just go down. So no hits onto the Tower for me. I thought the Hunter was going to... Uh, die a lot quicker than it actually did. Uh, but here, as you can see, he goes in with a Mega Knight, and I just go ahead and rock it onto that, because you can see the rocket does about two -third, uh, one third of the health onto the Mega Knight, so it's actually not as bad as a tr of a trade as you might think. So here, I go in uh, with a mortar to tank as well as play some offense. Uh, bad log on my end, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and as you can see here, it gets a little sketchy. I go in with archers here to tank for those two uh, those two goblins in the front, and then the archers will help finish off those uh, skeletons from the barrel as well. So now I'm about 300 damage ahead, but he's just going to continue to build up those massive pushes at the bridge. And as you can see here, another thing to note is I play that knight so that the mega knight never actually gets a jump onto it. Uh, that way it just kind of maximizes the amount of health that the knight has. And here, it gets a little bit sketchy. I go in with archers here. Uh, tricky barrel right there. And unfortunately, that royal giant does lock on for two hits. However, I do get my mortar locked onto the tower. He went pretty all in on that push. And here, I'm going to go pretty all out defending this mortar. Archers and a log. I really don't want the hunter to get a, uh, a shot there. Unfortunately, it does. And now I'm thinking, yeah, I really want to finish off that uh, dark goblin. And here, he plays down his barbarians. And I'm thinking, what in the world? He just has so much to distract my mortar that the only way I'm going to get a lock onto the tower is if I have him at like no elixir. So here, tornado there. I do not want to take any of the death damage from that skeleton barrel. Just not about that. And again, he's going to reload with another Mega Knight Royal Giant push. And <laughs> it's kind of repetitive, but uh, it does get a little bit sketchy towards the end. So again, Knight making sure the Mega Knight doesn't jump. Mortar there uh, just to distract the Royal Giant. I go in with archers here. I decide to try and not use the log. And here, unfortunately, the oh, actually, no Royal Giant hits. I thought the Royal Giant actually would get a hit, but it uh, looks like we're good. And here, I decide to risk it and go in with a Mortar. He Mega Knights at the bridge. Fortunately, uh, his Hunter does go down, and I'm just going to play the same thing. Knights to distract the Mega Knights. Archer's down to finish all of this stuff off. And I believe, yep, I NATO everything backwards here and get a second Mortar down like so. So here is, <laughs> this is a sketchy defense here. As you can see, Royal Giant was on the tower, and, uh, ooh, Ooh, that Royal Giant is going to get so much damage. My tower is down to 160. And I go in here with a Mortar. He went pretty all out on that push. But uh, 20 seconds left, actually. And now his tower is down within rocket range. But he has a barrel coming in. I managed to get a uh, take no damage right here for some reason. I got really lucky. And uh, yeah, I cycled to the uh, Tornado. And I just barely managed to get by uh, with 25 HP to spare on my tower. So... A little bit sketchy there. As you can see, I wasn't very smart with how I used my log, so he was able to get a lot more damage than I would have liked. Alrighty, next up, we're going to be against MKS Martin, and this is a 2.9 matchup. Now, this matchup is insanely tricky. In theory, they do have a pretty hard counter because you can't really rocket cycle them out because they you need to rocket for the expo, and they just have so many ways of distracting your mortar. So this is a matchup that I kind of had to learn uh, over time how to take down. It's insanely difficult. And uh, so yeah, starting off, of course, we're cycling. And what I like to do when I know I'm against 2.9 or the new 3.0 variation is I like to trick my opponent to think that I'm playing Expo as well, just with the rocket and cycle. So you can see here, uh, I just go in with a rocket, cycle some skeletons as well, and a log to not take any chip damage at all from that Expo. And here the opponent probably thinks I am playing Expo, except with the rocket subbed in for the fireball. That's probably the reason why the, he doesn't just start fireball cycling me, because that's what most 2.9 players will do. And 
instead he's just going to continue to assume that i do have an expo and i believe that is a big reason as to why i win many of these matchups so starting off again as you can see as long as you're keeping up with his cycle you're generally able to always have the rocket for that expo and yeah as you can see starting off i'm just just cycling, cycling, keeping up with this cycle, and making sure that I do not take more chip damage than I have to. And the ultimate goal here is to reach like the last 30 seconds or so and have about the same amount of HP uh, on your towers as your opponent does. So yeah, starting off here again, I'm just cycling. He's trying to cycle back to the expo as well. Kind of a boring start. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I cycle my archers here. I know he's back to the expo, and I'll just go ahead and rock it like so. I do get skeletons down in time, but unfortunately, that expo does lock onto the tower, and with just a little bit of health, that expo gets so much damage, and actually, I am in the lead, but uh, that expo got about 400 damage onto that tower. So now we're in double elixir time, and I'm a little bit more comfortable with trying to sneak rockets in onto the tower. So... You can see here I go ahead and tornado just to get as much chip damage as I can. Again, he goes in with an expo. I just go ahead and go skeletons and a log. Stop any and all chip damage from that expo. And uh, now I believe I'm going to just continue to cycle. And here I think he makes that one play that allows me to actually rocket cycle. And that is to play a defensive expo. You can see here he plays that defensive expo. And I know that is one of the few chances that I'll get to play a rocket onto his tower. And now he has a fast cycle. So he's gonna try and cycle to a second expo, but here he actually decides to go in with fireball So that significantly slows down his cycle and that actually allows me to go uh, to cycle back to a rocket in time So here I believe I go in with a knight up high and then rocket onto that expo uh, I'm not sure why I didn't play that rocket first Probably just a little misplay and here the opponent goes in with a fireball Although I do still have the damage lead so I'm not too worried instead as soon as his defensive expo dies I go in with my own defensive mortar and a defensive mortar is actually super duper clutch Make sure you always play in the anti-fireball position always 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 and you can see here, he decided to he decided to fireball onto the mortar instead of onto the tower. So he wasn't able to get the chip damage that he wanted. So here, I'm just constantly cycling my cards, and I managed to cycle back to my knight in time. And the, yeah, but you're just gonna want to try and DPS down that expo, uh, how in however way you can. And oftentimes, what I like to do is I like to cycle multiple logs onto the expo uh, because the expo. Logs do a surprisingly large amount of damage to the expo, and you can see in this defense here, I believe. Uh, I think I go in with a knight here, uh, and then I think I just log, I think, oh no, I go in with archers, and then a log. Uh, and that actually manages to DPS down that expo. So now, last minute overtime, I'm in exactly the position I want. We have the, about the same amount of damage on each of our towers. And here, once we're in triple elixir, you can actually defend an expo without using the rocket onto it. So you can see here, knight, archers down. And we're just always able to actually cycle to a ground answer for that expo. So Ice Spirit there, cycle back to a Mortar, cycle back to a Knight. Archers down will take down the second expo. And uh, you can see the opponent tries to fireball out the Mortar, but not going to work. And uh, I just go in with a Mortar on offense this time because I felt like I got quite, uh, quite a big Elixir advantage. The opponent tries to go in with a uh, an expo opposite lane. I have more than enough to distract it uh, right there, and 19 seconds left. As you can see, I am ahead in damage, and there's no way that he's going to catch up or get an expo through uh, my defenses. So 10 seconds left, I send in my rocket, and you can see I am pretty far ahead in terms of damage. No way he's going to catch up. And yeah, as you can see, managed to sneak a win against that Expo deck. This matchup, very, very difficult. You have to pretty much play it perfectly and not allow a single Expo connection on your tower. Alrighty, so last but not least, we're going to be against Roy Crow from the clan Crowns Arnos, and he's going to be using a three Musketeers Royal Hogs Fireball Bait deck. Now this deck is really, really difficult because there's almost no way you're going to break through with that mortar. Absolutely no way. Every single card in this deck is a cheap, uh, medium health unit. So like there's just he's gonna like always have something to distract your mortars on offense like absolutely he's always going to have something so as you can see here a bit of an unfortunate start you can see he has a pretty big double lane push coming in my way and i'm thinking what in the world am i supposed to do uh going with archers here and then an ice spear to tank for everything and then a knight to pull both the dark prince as well as that hunter unfortunately uh the dark prince takes down those archers but uh that defense uh not not ideal of course but 
uh, that was pretty much the best I could do. And he goes in here with an Ice Golem opposite lane. I believe he also goes in with a Dark Prince in the back. So I just go ahead and go in with a Mortar in that opposite lane. Unfortunately, however, he has the Hunter and the Hunter just... Oh my gosh, the Hunter just destroys the Mortar. Like, it's so bad. But luckily here, he is pretty low on Elixir, so I just go ahead, use an Ice Spirit Tornado, get myself a King Tower activation right there. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty solid start to the match. Uh, we, we are about a thousand damage behind, but uh, he doesn't... Okay, actually, he does have a Fireball. But uh, yeah, here, uh, I just go in with a Mortar, playing offense with defense here. Uh, so Mortar and Skeletons will be enough to DPS down those Royal Hogs. Meanwhile, as you can see, he had to play down an Ice Golem, which is just additional Elixir that pretty much is not going to get him any value whatsoever. And uh, so yeah, now I believe he's going to save up the 10 elixir and play down those three musketeers. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the tornado in cycle, so I'm just going to play the rocket down onto those two musketeers on the left. So uh, heading towards double elixir time here. Uh, things are starting to get a little bit sketchy because uh, he can begin to build up some insanely large pushes He goes in with the Dark Prince right there uh, I go in with an Ice Spirit right there like so unfortunately it actually jumps onto his Heal Spirit which uh as you can see here, allows him to build up an insanely large push here. I go in with a Mortar at the bridge right there, cycle back to a Log, and I'm just barely able to defend that. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, fortunately that Hunter also will get DPS down, so I don't have to spend any extra Elixir onto that. So at this point, um, you're going to have to Rocket Cycle at some point, because again, there's no way you're breaking through it like normally. So here again, I go in with a Defensive Mortar, and then I go in with some Archers right here. Here, I'm going to put him in a difficult situation, because he either has to choose between Fireballing onto the Tower, or Fireballing out my Archers. And here, he chooses to just Fireball there, and I have quite a bit of an advantage, so I go in with a Rocket. So here, as you can see, I also go in with an offensive mortar because I knew he was going to play those two musketeers. He saw that I played that rocket, so I immediately knew that he was going to play those musketeers. Therefore, I was able to mortar on the offense, tornado those three musketeers in the same lane, and just completely obliterate those musketeers on the spot. So here, he does miss one of those archers, and I do manage to get a mortar lock onto the tower. Knight there will actually tank for that hunter. And, and now we've kind of caught up here. Uh, his tower is down to 1646 and he has mine down to 1368. So yeah, here I believe I just go in with a rocket and then a defensive mortar like so. Skeletons to soak up that heal from that heal spirit. You do not want it connecting on those hogs, let me tell you. Log down will actually do a very good job right there. And now we are pretty much tied up. So things are looking pretty good going into the last minute of this match. Of course, he's all about building up those double lane Pushes, so he has a push on the left, Royal Hogs in the right, Mortar to tank for the Dark Prince, uh, actually Knight to tank for the Dark Prince, Mortar to tank for those Hogs. And uh, as you can see here, he's trying to spell cycle me out as well. So that's actually just Elixir that's completely getting wasted, which will actually allow me to rocket cycle as well. And look at his tower, down to rocket range. So I go ahead and cycle back to a second rocket, and that is more than enough to finish off his tower. So as you can see here, you have to play some really, really smart defense and make sure that you always have the correct cards in cycle to take care of what he has. The mortar is not going to get any hits onto the tower. You can just give up on trying to play mortars on offense for the most part at least and just stay cognizant of the opponent's seal spirit because if you let that thing get too much value you're basically it's basically game over for you so there we go as you can see pushing up to 66 20 on ladder not too bad hopefully i can push up to 7k this season not quite sure yet but uh We'll, we'll see how this meta looks uh, as we head towards the end of this season. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. Huge thanks to all of my channel members. You guys are the absolute Gs. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Ray, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.